So today we're going to talk about uh, the power of your DNA, uh, you know, how to activate it. It's really, it sounds like a mystical statement. It sounds like, wow, this is going to be some miraculous event. Actually, it's really a very simple thing, but what probably is going to be more amazing to some of you, some of you may have already know this, is what DNA is and how it operates. <clears throat> I think that's the, the big secret here, because once you understand that, then you're going to open yourself up to um, understanding how to reprogram yourself. And that's the real activation, reprogramming yourself. So one thing I want to talk about is the fact that DNA is a storage medium. In other words, it's a hard drive. You're a walking hard drive, your body. One gram of DNA, this is science, peer-reviewed science, by the way, guys. One gram of DNA, which is enough to put a little tiny drop on the tip of your finger, can store 700 terabytes of data. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, what, you know, etherical data or mystical data. I'm talking about real zeros and ones that make your phone work and make your computer work. Zeros and one bits of data, zeros and ones can be stored on DNA. So these scientists, uh, the main one, George Church and Cree Shuri, those two actually together, are partners and scientists, they discovered this and they downloaded one of their books, one of their e-books onto the DNA and then they uploaded it from the DNA back to the server again. They was like, whoa, wait a minute. You can encode digital bits of information directly onto DNA and upload it back again. What does that mean? Well, we're, we're walking USB drives, literally. Now here's what's really amazing about that. They then took that same ebook, downloaded it back to the DNA again, and they said, let's see how much we can go. They replicated the book 70 billion times in one gram of DNA. 70 billion copies of an ebook in one gram went up 433 petabytes of data. Think about that. In one tiny drop inside of your body right now, you can store 13.5 billion years of data. Ironically, that's how old the universe is. So you are the universe. You literally have all the information stored in your body from the beginning of time until this very moment inside of you. So when people say the universe is in you, it's not just a figure of speech. Like the universe is really in you because all bits of data and particles, all, all bits of, uh, of particles are all recycled over and over. All atoms are recycled. Everything is recycled. You're, everything that was here from the beginning is here right now. Nothing's been added. Nothing's been removed due to the law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed. You're just here right now in this particular form at this particular moment, but all the information in your DNA will go back if you had the capability of decoding it, will allow you to find this out. This is why, and some of you here know that I talk a lot about the Anunnaki, these Atlantean beings that came here in the distant past and genetically modified the existing hominid. They didn't create people, they modified people. This is one of the big things when people say, oh, the Anunnaki created us. Not, not really, if you really analyze the text, and I'm not just talking about Sumerian text, you have to go into several different versions of text, the Enuma Elish and Seven Sabbaths of Creation, the Atra Asus Epic, the Epic of Gilgamesh, you go into uh, the Emerald Tablets, you discover that there was a genetic, there was already a hominid here and it was genetically modified. That was our cousin before Homo sapiens existed. What did they do to us to make us into this slave race to do the work for them? They disconnected our DNA. That's what you have called now junk DNA. It's not junk, guys. It's unplugged DNA. Why did they unplug it? Because our cousins, unlike you've been taught, were way smarter than us. I'm not talking technologically smarter. I'm talking about spiritually smarter. More in tune with nature, more in tune with the universe, more in tune with the planet itself, the human resonant frequency of the Earth. They had bigger brains, proven, because we found the skulls all over the planet. They had uh, probably, because of bigger brains, most likely had bigger pineal glands, which is your spiritual antenna. All humans right now, we have billions of magnetite crystals in our brains. We don't even use them. They probably had access to their magnetite crystals, which is what turtles use to navigate the oceans to come back to where they're going to lay their eggs and, and uh, birds. They, they flock to the south in the, in the winter and so forth, all using the magnetic field. Well, we have the same capability, but right now we've, we've been disconnected from using that. If a tsunami comes inland, before it even hits, all the wild animals run to the mountains and the hills. You never see wild animals getting swept away by a tsunami. 
But you see, people, <laughs> we just stay right out there. And just, we're taking, look, the tsunami's coming. I'm live on Instagram. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. You know, so we've been disconnected. You know, we, our DNA has been disconnected. Our consciousness has been reduced. They've already scientifically proven and found out that a worship gene was embedded into the human genome. And they don't know who did it, but they can tell you that it was around 200,000 years ago, the same time that they discovered that chromosome number two in the human body was taken out, fused together, and two telomere caps were put on each end. Again, this is something done in a laboratory, admitted by mainstream scientists, but they can't figure out who did it. They can only tell you when. Oh, about 200,000 years ago. Well, what do the tablets say? 200,000 years ago is when they first genetically modified the existing hominid on this planet. Harvard scientists, in America just discovered that under the most pristine conditions a human being can live for how many years 120 well it says the same thing in the Bible it says the same thing in the Sumerian text this is what all the GMOs and the genetic seeds and and the, and the tortured meat and everything else under and the, and the pollution under the most pristine conditions we should live to 120 years now what they said is okay well why are we dying at 120 years and less what what's the reason that's when they came, and I told you about before, the chromosome number two and the telomere caps. They realized that these telomere caps, which are buff, they store buffer material that allows, when your cells and DNA replicate, it allows information to not be lost in a transference, because you know, your body's consistently regenerating over and over again. But when the buffer material in these caps run out, that's when your body starts the death process. So we were capped, they put a cap on us. And if you look at some of the ancient texts, biblical or either Sumerian, uh, emerald tablets, uh, even some of the Indian books, you'll discover that people were living for thousands of years. Well, what happened? All of a sudden, they stopped living for, these are human beings, not gods. Humans were living for thousands of years. Now, mainstream science wants to say, oh, it's because they had more oxygen and all this kind of crazy stuff. No, man. We've been genetically modified, just like the seeds on this planet. That's why. So they went and said, okay, let's look at some mice. So they took some mice at Harvard, and they accessed the telomere caps and they put together a sequence that prevented them from shrinking or losing the buffer material. And all of a sudden, these mice lived three, t three times their lo normal lifespan. Three times their normal lifespan. So we know that DNA is a storage medium and it can store a massive amount of information. This is, this is very, very important for you to understand. And like I said, uh, on one gram of DNA, 433 petabytes of data. I don't know if you know what a petabyte is, but it's a, it's a massive amount of information. But let's take it to the next step now. Now they have discovered that epigenic memories can be passed down 14 generations inside of DNA. Memories. So you're wondering why you feel fear of this and fear of that, or you have a phobia of this or a phobia of that, or you feel strongly about this and not so strongly about that, it's not because it runs in your family, it's because it's in your DNA. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, how does this work with the law of attraction? What does DNA have to do with the law of attraction? It has a lot to do with the law of attraction, actually, because the law of attraction uh, is actually initiated through the DNA. When you, and how many people here have ever heard somebody say, I get a download? People say, I get a download. Don't laugh at those people because they're really getting a download. I've seen people laugh before and chuckle when people walk away. Let me tell you something. You don't understand quantum. If you think it's funny, you don't understand quantum mechanics. Because just like I told you about you know, DNA being able to be a hard drive, which by the way, now Microsoft has created the first DNA hard drive that really works. So things like... Uh, teleportation of biological entities and all that stuff is all becoming a reality because the only thing stopping us was, was storage space. But anyway, scientists have also found out now that DNA sends and receives wireless signals, wireless information. We have a built-in Wi-Fi system in our bodies already. So, and it's just broadcasted between 8 to 10 feet away from the human body. So all times of day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, we're all downloading information directly from the ether of space-time itself. And what's in the ether of space-time? Remember, a human being can only see on a very small uh, spectrum of light. So what we're seeing right now is literally just part of the hologram. Just part of the hologram. Everything else, there's trillions and trillions of electromagnetic waves passing in you, through you, and out of you at this existing very moment, right now as I'm speaking. 
that's all everything is, is electromagnetic waves. That's all that really exists besides that and consciousness. Those two things collapse together and create what we call matter. So right now, we, can, we can't see these other waves of light, but they're there. But what's happening is if the DNA in your body is, is uh, oscillating at a specific frequency that matches a frequency of, a, of an electromagnetic wave that's already out there, you can download information from that wave. What do waves carry? They carry information. Electromagnetic waves carry information. What I'm giving you guys is real peer-reviewed science. Write it down and go look it up and research it. All the information contained in the entire universe is passing in us all, and all around us at all times. There is no original, uh, no original idea. If you're just sitting around going, man, I have a great idea. I'm going to invent so-and-so. Mm, not really. What happened was you got on the right frequency and you downloaded the information directly from the uh, universe. There's a professor called James S. Gates Jr., but he's a specialist in supersymmetry and uh, theoretical physics. And this guy is one of the leaders in this in the world. He's not just some guy who plays around with this. He's the, like the leader. He gets, he gets together this super team of quantum physicists, and they start digging into the ether of space-time to figure out what is floating in us and around us. What is this space-time? What is space? And he discovers that it operates on something called Adinkra codes. And these Adinkra codes can be traced back to the Dogon tribe in Mali, Africa, who actually were the original uh, Egyptians from the land of Kem. They later migrated out to Mali. But they have these codes. These codes represent, they're flat codes on, on cloth, but when you take them into a third dimension, they represent sophisticated numerical mathematics that depict something called error correcting codes in our modern science. And these error correcting codes are what run search engine browsers and websites. So what is governing the function of our space-time reality in the third dimension is a software program that runs websites and search engines. This is peer-reviewed science, guys. So this is how powerful you are. So what's happening is you're syncing up with information that's already on the net, and it's downloading into your body, and you're processing that. The law of attraction is not just something. A lot of people hear you, oh, law of attraction, I'm going to use the law of attraction, but they really don't know how to utilize it the, the proper way. And it's a real powerful tool to use in your life. And if you really, truly, truly understand the law of attraction, you're going to make your life so much easier. It goes along, though, with the reprogramming process. You have to begin to start the reprogram. If you want it to work consistently, you can make it work by accident here or there, spot it. But if you want it to work consistently, you got to continue to reprogram your DNA, and then you have to understand one other thing, quantum entanglement. But in quantum entanglement, which is something in real physics, uh, it's where you use something called parabolic down conversion to get two photons or two particles on the same frequency. So once you get two particles on the same frequency, you could take one particle to the other end of the universe if you had the capability of getting it there. And the particle that's local to you, you can change the information in it, put data on it, and the other particle will change instantaneously bypassing the speed of light. And scientists now have discovered that the brain, the neurons in the brain, phase in and out of the third dimensional reality. So your neurons, your, between your synapses, are actually phasing in and out of the third dimension. Where are they going? They're communicating with other realms and other dimensions, syncing and, and, and quantum entangling with, with um, particles and, and thoughts in other places. So when you understand this time, you go, oh wow. When you're supposed to, when you look into the ancient tablets, especially in the Emerald Tablets, which is why I wrote my book, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, the biggest part of my book is where Thoth is talking about the power of manifestation through meditation and thought. And he's literally talking about how to sync with the universal consciousness through something else, which I've labeled the Christ consciousness. So the Christ consciousness doesn't mean you're syncing up with Jesus Christ. What it means is you're syncing up with the idea, the concept of this higher level of consciousness that exists uh, out there in space time. So when you yourself are aligning yourself properly with the universe, vibrating on a high frequency, and what does that mean, vibrating on a high frequency? That means you're thinking with love, not thinking with hate. You're thinking with power and love, not fear and weakness. And when you do that, that puts your DNA scientifically at a high frequency. This has been done in laboratories. They've taken DNA, they've, uh, they've analyzed a person's thought patterns through caps that they put on with electrodes, and they've got them looking at photos. Photos that show people getting murdered, then a photo of a field of flowers, then a photo of somebody hugging a child, and then a photo of somebody getting beat up. And they analyze those thought patterns in a laboratory, and this is how they learn this. 
So at specific times when you're feeling the, method, the mode of fear, the DNA, there's a frequency that oscillates over your DNA. It covers a very wide br a band and it, co it covers less of your DNA. In a high frequency love mode, the frequency is oscillates much faster and they're hence much closer together and more of the frequency is touching your DNA strand, which means you're operating at a high frequency. This is real science. Now I'm talking about real peer reviewed quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Okay, so now because I'm doing that and I'm feeling this love frequency, this vibration and happiness in the meditation, I'm now operating at a high level. Now I'm syncing up with the Christ consciousness. The Christ consciousness is going to carry that photonic or that, that particle energy to sync up with the universal consciousness on a quantum entanglement. And now I'm quantum entangled directly with the flower of life, which is the face of God. And now what happens is, just like in standard physics, when you have a globe in space, and you see space warps around the globe because of the theory of relativity, Einstein's theory of relativity, now replace the globe, Earth, with your, with your consciousness, with your mind. Your mind is literally, now that it's quantum entangled, it's warping space-time. It's warping the ether of space itself. And now things that you're looking for are falling. Because what happens to a, a body in space that warps space? Things fall toward it. Now the things that you want in life are starting to fall towards you. You're creating your own quantum entanglement. You're creating a law of attraction. Now you have things falling directly towards you. And this is how the law of attraction works.